Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So the big piece of news that has recently dropped is that proper PS5 backports are now possible thanks to a new project released from Best Pig known as Backpork, which is a great name by the way. Backports allow you to take games that require higher firmwares to run and get them running on older ones. So Backport monitors game launches on the PS5. When a game PPSA or CUSA title is launched, it automatically mounts a fake lib folder which is stored on the game's app directory over the game's library path using UnionFS. This allows for library replacement slash injection without modifying the original files. So the idea is that the game gets backported by taking the system libraries it relies on from one of the firmwares that the game already supports, and those libraries are stripped of any dependencies that don't exist on the older firmware. They are then added to a fake lib folder, and the best port payload will swap out the libraries on launch with the modified ones, allowing the game to run on the older firmware. So the payload is just designed to swap out the libraries with the modified ones to allow them to run on the older firmware. That's essentially what it does. However, there is patches, some system library patches that have already been included in this initial release. It says here that I have provided patches in the patches folder, BPS format, to patch libraries from firmware 10.01, and make them functional on firmware 7.61. And this is probably achievable for lower firmwares as well, but it has not yet been tested and would require additional patches. And we've already seen a demonstration of this from a prominent backporter, Speed-007, who has shown this working and actually running three games on 7.61. And those games are Silent Hill 2, Black Myth Wukong, and Astrobot working here on 7.61 and Astrobot usually has a minimum firmware of 9.0 in order to get that game running as a game dump but he's able to actually run it on 7.61 thanks to this new development. So this is a really huge positive development for anybody waiting on older firmwares as you soon may have the ability to run games that would normally only work on the highest jailbreakable firmwares like 10.01 for example. So as they say good things come to those who wait. So moving on to the PlayStation View application for the PS4, been asked to, you know, give an update on this and there hasn't really been much happening over the past few days, at least nothing that has been public. However, of course, we did get a couple of videos that were circulating online over the past few days and these seem to originate from the Research and Development Discord. So the first video is to demonstrate that the PlayStation View exploit is actually not going to require an internet connection as was previously thought. So this will actually work with just a network connection, but internet is not required. This means you could use an ESP32, 8266, Raspberry Pi device to, to host a local network. If you don't have your console connected to a home network, then you can connect to one of these devices that hosts their own isolated Wi-Fi network, and that will work. You can connect the PS4 to it, and then when you run the PlayStation View application, it will allow you to run the exploits just off that network connection without requiring an internet connection. So that's the general idea here. So the video shows that I believe uh, it is connected to one of these devices with an offline network. And then you can see the PlayStation View is loaded and it has successfully loaded the exploit. This is just the userland exploit being loaded here. Although, of course, work is still ongoing to chain this with the kernel exploit to allow us to use it to jailbreak the PS4. And currently they are on stage three of porting the kernel exploit. So it is getting quite close here. Once stage three is done, there probably won't be much more to go until we get some kind of implementation. Now, beyond that, we also got another video that was circulating, also originating from the uh, Research and Development Discord. This one is from Earth Onion, and this version seems to show some kind of payload menu that looks like it's implemented within the PlayStation View application. So we can see loading the Poopsploit Test JS and then the IDU mode JS. So these are different payloads that are being executed here from this menu. So once the exploit is loaded, it may perhaps, you know, switch to some kind of payload menu where you can tell it to load specific payloads that you want to run on the console. So it looks like more thought is going into making this exploit as convenient as possible for the end user once it's released. So we'll have to see if this actually ends up being implemented in the final version. So that's what we've got there with the PlayStation View application. Beyond that, we also got a little tweet from Gejine here saying that they sent another report to Sony and hope they triage faster than 2026. So in other words, they've reported some kind of vulnerability to Sony via the HackerOne bug bounty program. And we'll see how long before the report is actually validated and if it ends up getting 
you know, disclosed at some point in the future. Because it's Geji now, we can usually safely assume it's going to be some kind of user land exploit if it is anything rather than a kernel exploit because most of the developments that we see from this developer tends to be user land based but we won't know more until the developer gives us more information about this or until it is eventually disclosed sometime in the future so that's all we've got for updates that could pertain to the ps4 so let's go ahead and move on to some of the ps5 updates so first of all we have a lot of updates for the uh, youtube jailbreak now i did do a deep dive update video for the YouTube jailbreak specifically covering all of these updates in depth also showing you how to install all of the updates as well in that video so if you want to you know dive in a little bit deeper to these updates then check out that video that I uploaded previously which will be linked in the video description. So first of all we got the uh, YouTube jailbreak updated to version 1.3 this is the original project so this update is mainly a stability update so making the kill YouTube stable when the jailbreak closes the YouTube application, it will now close it properly. We've also got the PSN pop-up disable, making that stable, making the two second limit removal stable, fixing a few bugs and adding DLSYM offset prediction. And of course you can install it by simply copying the download.dat file over to the user download PPSA01650 folder if you already have the jailbreak set up to update it or you can simply restore the backup file on a retail console. If you want the auto loader, it has also been updated to version 0.4, which now includes the 1.3 version of the original project included in the auto loader. So for that one, you just go ahead and download the Y2JB update file, put it on the USB drive, and then when you load the YouTube jailbreak, it will update to the latest version of the auto loader. Now, beyond that, we also got an update to the YouTube jailbreak web UI, which is becoming my favorite way of loading the jailbreak with the YouTube jailbreak at the moment. The idea is that you run a web server on some device on your local network. It has a Docker file as well as an install script for Windows and Linux. So you can pretty much set this up on any device on your local network. It will run the web server that sends the payloads for the console to execute whenever you open the YouTube jailbreak. So it can be used as an auto loader, but then it also has a web panel, which makes it easy to swap out different payloads for it to load. So we have some updates here. The developers on this project are rmuxnet or rmuxnet, nasky and r-freeman. So this update adds a bunch of new features, including one that I was personally requesting in my previous video. So first of all, there's this new tools section and it's added an FTP client. So the idea is that you can send the download0.dat file for any new versions of the YouTube application using FTP by clicking this button and it will send it from your computer and upload it to the correct location on the file system of the PS5 to update the YouTube jailbreak. So it can be done with one click, which is nice. There's also a block updates option that you can enable as well. I believe the update blocker, just like all the other update blockers for the PS5, is not persistent, unlike the PS4 where it is persistent because the update directory gets wiped on a reboot. So that is something to bear in mind. So one of the features that I was asking for was the ability to enable and disable certain payloads for the autoloader, because generally you're not going to want it to autoload every single payload when you run the YouTube jailbreak. There might be certain payloads like the app dumper that you only want to load when you want to dump an application and you don't want it to load as soon as you run the jailbreak. So that's now been added. I can select specific payloads that I don't want to load. For instance, I can uncheck this box here and now the web server is disabled for autoload. So when I run the YouTube jailbreak, it will load all of the other payloads, but not the web server. And then when I want to load the web server, I can just go onto this panel and click load and it will load that on the console. So that's the idea there. You can also change the load order of the payloads by just dragging the payloads, you know, up one so that it will load that one first. And there you go. It saves the load order so you can choose which order you want each payload to load in. And it also has a little delay option that you can toggle and that will add the delay probably don't want to do that for laps you're going to want to do that for other payloads but the idea is that you know you might want to give a certain delay between each payload executing to give you know whatever setup one payload is doing give that time to finish before the next payload is loaded so you have that option there as well so some handy features being added there you also have this experimental ftp section here that will remotely connect to the console and give you access to the file system just like a normal ftp client where you can download files upload rename do all of that stuff, create new folders and new files on your console. So in just a couple of days, we have some pretty big updates to the YouTube jailbreak web UI. So that is great to see there. Now beyond that, a few other updates. So sticking with the theme of web panels here, we also have a beta version of Shadow Mount, a new pre-beta. So this version is available on Ko-Fi, 
I'll leave it linked, of course, in the video description, which adds a web panel for managing how Shadow Mount is used, which is pretty handy because before you didn't really have much of a choice. All you could do was load the payload, it would do the scanning, and it would create the shortcuts on the home menu for any games that it found, and that was about it. So the idea is you just go to the PS5's IP address with port 8085, so colon 8085 on some device that is connected to the same network as your PS5. And then from there, you can see we get this. So this is the web panel. And, and again, this is just a pre-beta version here, so probably a lot more updates to come. But the idea is that you can tell it to scan whenever you want. So when you click scan, you can see it will initiate a rescan on the console itself to scan for any new games that might have been added. You can also go into the settings here and change how often it will scan. So you can change the scan interval to however long you want for rescanning as well as it's got stability window as well. You can also enable database patching and toggle the web server on and off. And you can even add custom paths to scan and a block list. I guess any maybe applications or paths that you don't want it to scan, you can also add to the block list. And then we also have the system log showing up here as well, which kind of tells you what the payload has been doing. And then if we head back here, you can also remotely launch your applications here. So any games or applications that it found, like Astro, Astrobot here, if I click play, that should actually, you know, launch it on the console. We'll say OK. And now if I switch over, you can see it has actually launched that game on the console itself. So that is another update coming with Shadow Mount. Again, this is available as a beta, but you might want to obviously wait until there is a full version available. Now, we've also had the release of a bunch of new tools that can be used to transfer your PS5 game dumps over to the internal storage because generally it's not recommended to use FTP to copy the games over because it's generally unreliable. The best thing I think is still to use items flow to copy the game dump from a USB locally over to the console storage instead of over the network. But if you do want to copy the games over the network, you do have a couple of different pieces of software that are designed to make that easier. So one of them here is PS5 Upload. And then we also have PS5 Upload Suite 2.0 and also PS5 Vault version 1.1.0. So all of these have seen recent updates in the past day. So the one that I've tested so far is PS5 Upload. So this one actually supports RAR extraction, so you can just send the RAR file directly, because most game dumps come in some kind of compressed archive, so you can just send the archive and it will do the extraction for you and upload it to the console. You can send the payload from the software, you select your game dump, and then once you are connected to the console, you can then upload it and it will detect if there's a RAR file involved. It has support for different types of compression as well as the ability to, you know, change where you want to upload it to. You can select the ETA Hen Games folder on the console storage or the Homebrew folder on the console storage or a custom location. And then you can upload the file and it will start transferring it over. And it also has the option to apply the chmod777, which of course is the read, write and execute permissions for the folder which is one of the reasons why you get the black screen issue when you copy games over to the internal storage is because they don't have the correct execute permissions applied on the directory. So that can be applied here once the transfer is complete automatically within the tool. So it just makes it a more reliable and faster way of transferring your games over to the console storage from your computer. And like I say, there's a few of these pieces of software that have been popping up recently. You can use whichever one you like the best. So anyway, those are the updates that have been happening over the past few days here with the PS4 and PS5. Lots of updates as usual. Things are definitely not slowing down. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.